Hey guys, my name's uh, Christopher Wheel. Uh, Penguin Magic kindly asked me to uh, talk a little bit about creativity. So um, let's start from the beginning and uh, we'll work our way and we'll branch off in some different ideas. Um, so yeah, so first off with creativity, uh, it really helps to think, uh, people say think outside the box. So how do you think outside the box? Well, a really good way to start with thinking outside the box is just to fill the box. So this is what we have. We have magic and we have all the space in between, right? You have your cards, your coins, stage, you know, close up, sponge, silk, rope, all this different kind of magic. What you need to do is you really need to pick, you know, you can pick one specialty or you can just try to get a little of everything and you just want to fill up that box as much as you can. Now, let's say you just want to be strictly cards. What you're going to do is you're going to go out and you're going to research cards. You're going to do everything you can to learn about card magic. You're going to, you know, look into old, you know, old magazines. You're going to look into old books, old articles, and the new and all the new stuff. And you're just going to kind of collect these ideas. You're going to collect some slights. You're going to collect some uh, plots, and you're going to collect some methods. And what you're going to do is you're going to have all those in your head. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill up the box. So. Um, also what helps though is even if you are a card magician you do want to you don't want to just strictly work with just cards you also want to research outside the card spectrum just so you can take you know you could take uh, different ideas and different plots from other uh, kinds of magic and put them into your card magic so um, so we'll stick with like working on a card effect what you're gonna do is you're gonna get all that information you're gonna search everywhere else and then you're gonna try to fill up that box so that's the first step so once that box is filled up pretty well and you're able to think outside the box and think out uh, to different things that people haven't really explored yet, then you can start really creating. Um, the second part is inspiration. So where do we get inspiration from? Um, you know, there's a ton of places to get inspiration from because what we're looking at is we're looking at magic as an art. Uh, so think like an artist. Where do artists get inspiration from? They get inspiration from the world around them. They get inspiration from movies, music, TV. Um, you know, just nature, um, architecture, you know, uh, all different sorts of mediums, you know, uh, friends, family. They collect the ideas up and they say, you know, they just take all this and use it in an inspirational art piece. Um, so that's what we have to do with our magic. We have to, we can't just sit all day and read our books and just be like, magic, 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 magic. Okay, we, we really just want to get out there and you want to like explore um, other things you want to explore as much as you can I like to listen to music um, I listen to classical music it kinda of gets your your brain going a little makes you kinda of relaxed and opens you up to new ideas um, also uh, I do watch a lot of movies you know like all of us do so I try to take stuff out of that I also personally take a lot out of school uh, a lot of people don't like to try to mix magic in school but school really helps especially with the subjects uh, if you have a subject you're interested in it helps you with um, scripting. Uh, it helps me a lot with scripting, especially I'm a psychology major, so I use a lot of uh, psychology scripting in my act. Uh, and also, if you see something that's interesting, like let's say you're taking history and you learn about uh, George Washington crossing the Delaware or something, you can work out a script based on George Washington and the Delaware, which might be, you know, it could be like a cards across. You can be like, what's the story, you know? And you can really just take that and kind of just put it into something and work it out. So, what you want to do is get inspiration. So just look around for that. Um, so you can also go to like a craft store. You know, if you want to see what is out there, you can use. So instead of just sitting there with a deck of cards, you know, you can add stuff to it. If you want to like add different props, craft stores have a lot of little arts and craft things to make bigger arts and crafts things. Like uh, you know, they might have like little little ball things, or they might have wooden objects you know something that might be like oh this is a weird looking prop this is kind of interesting I can use this in my act so uh, just go out and explore so get out of the house and do that um, now we're gonna kinda just jump around uh, so the hardest parts for me is the inspiration and filling the box um, I've done a lot of research over the last years just trying to fill that box up and uh, I've been trying to find a lot of inspiration um, for inspiration, this also gets on to the next part about creating and inspiration is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, talk to your friends, kind of 
problem solve. Be like, you know, I'm trying to think of something. I want to do something with, you know, I want to do something with a coin and I want to have it disappear or something. And, you know, and if your friend might have more uh, knowledge in coins, ask them. You know, uh, the more help you can get, this helps with filling up your box and it also helps with uh, getting inspiration for ideas. Uh, I have a group of friends that I uh, recent I uh, often uh, jam with online using like a tinychat.com uh, type of thing, and uh, we just talk about ideas and we kind of shoot ideas past each other. And then, you know, I'll be like, I want to do this, and someone's like, Oh, why don't you just do this idea and combine it or put it in their hands? You know, and they kind of they kind of get your mind going. So having kind of a think tank uh, of friends to help you out really helps with uh, um, with uh, the the creation process. Uh, with my uh, effect, I just came out with, uh, and all will be consumed. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, time, I did talk to my friends about it, and uh, I talked to friends about, oh, how does this look? How do you think this would work? Um, how do you think this scripting would go? Um, even with uh, when I was working on impromptu version, my friend Austin Fields would sit down and be like, oh, this is what I have. This is what I have. So, um, you know, just ask your friends, and uh, they'll help you out a lot. So. Uh, also, with the inspiration of asking your friends, you'll have an idea. So once you get an idea of like what you want to happen, uh, like a plot or like how things want to go, next you have to think up the method. Now that should shouldn't be hard if you follow the first step and fill up you know your box as we'll call it. So you have all these different you know different techniques and all these this toolbox of uh, things to do to help you achieve this effect. So if you want to make a coin vanish. And how many different ways can you vanish a coin? You know, you can, uh, you know, you can do retention of vision vanish. You can do a French drop. You can do a thumb palm. You can do all these different things, which could make uh, something different uh, and change the routine a bit, which makes it easier to get into a next part. Or, you know, if you want to do a retention vanish, uh, you know, maybe if you did a thumb palm instead, it might be easier to get into the next part. So it all kind of goes in with filling your box, which is. I'm going to keep jumping back to that because that's really one of the biggest things uh, I feel. Um, so now I want to talk about kinds of creation. Um, I typically have two kinds of creation. The first creation is a, kind of a forced creation, and the second is a passive creation. So forced creation, uh, I kind of will sit down and be like, all right, I have a piece of chalk. I have a piece of chalk. What do I want to do with this piece of chalk? What would be a cool thing to do with this piece of chalk? And I apply it to different plots, or I think, oh, would it be cool to have a, you know, start with something basically like a color changing chalk, okay? Or maybe like a haunted chalk that writes itself, writes something out. Uh, you know, you get the plot, and that's like forced, forced creation. It's kind of like, you know, I'm sitting down, I'm actually working on it. And that's good. It's good if you can do that. Um, so that's a good place to start, too, if you just, you know, if you can also think of an idea and go with it. A uh, really good tip that I've gotten from a lot of people is to, uh, this also has to do with force creation and the next thing, which is passive, passive uh, creation, uh, is to write things down. So I'll get right back to that, but I'll talk about passive creation. Passive creation is when you have an idea and you kind of just let it sit a while and you kind of just let it kind of brew itself. And then sometime it's going to just click in your head and be like, oh, I should just do that. Um, I've had a I've had a couple ideas like that um, uh, consumed with one of them where I was kind of just like you know working on something else and then it just popped in my head it's like why this makes sense let's do something uh, this way so that's kind of uh, it's kind of a kind of a spontaneous creation uh, those are my favorite they usually end up pretty uh, they usually end up the best just because it's uh, in your head because your your mind will have an idea and unconsciously work on it so like when you sleep when you're doing something else your mind's always working on that idea and then sometime you'll just click back and it'll just they'll, you'll just know it and you'll be like oh that's awesome so uh... what i'll get back to what i was talking about earlier is to write things down this is good with passive creation too because if you're just sitting in your room and they oh that's a good idea what you want to do is you want to write it down right away um, i actually have a, a blackberry phone and i have uh... you can have memos and i have a memo that's magic ideas so I just take all the magic ideas I have, I just write them down, I just have a whole bunch of them, and uh, I just do that whenever I have an idea, or uh, if I want to do a force creation, I'll sit down and be like, well, it'd be cool. Okay, you know, uh, you know, like, 
the chalk writes itself out. So I'll go, you know, I'll go to my thing. I'll uh, chalk writes thing out. It's just something simple like that, and then you save it, and you're good. So um, that's kind of uh, like carry around. If you have a smartphone, that's nice because you know it's better for me because I can't read my writing anyhow. Uh, bring around a, a, a pad of paper and a pencil and just write down everything you can think of because the more you have the more you can pick and choose from and you can link things together so the more you write down the better uh, you should always have something to write down something with you or even do a voice memo if you want to just be like um, t uh, take a rope and something okay so you just record it down that was me recording so um, just do that just always write stuff down um, uh, so, with all that, um, think outside the box. You gotta fill it first. I wrote. See, I, I even wrote down what I was thinking to talk about, so I wouldn't forget. Uh, you know, just write things down. So, inspiration. Go all out uh, to the world. Just look here, look there. Try to find things that interest you or that are interesting, and try to work them into your magic. Uh, don't be worried about asking for help. Uh, once you get an idea, think about the method, and with all the information from uh, previous. Uh, research and methods you can probably work something out uh, but don't forget to talk to your friends like I just said um, let's see there's two kinds of creation the forced uh, and the passive um, uh, it's always nice with a forced creation just to sit down and just really just be like take an object like I write down lists of objects people use so I'll be like a pen pencil w wallet calculator uh, what's in a wallet you know lipstick check slip I just write all that down and then I can go through that list and pick one object out and be like, what can I do with this? So that's a force creation process that helps too. So make lists. Um, and a big one is don't give up on the ideas. Even if you're thinking it's impossible, don't give up. Just take a break. Just sit down, just relax, kind of forget about it. Write it, have it written down just so you know that it's there. And if you go back, you can uh, look, up, look it up again. But don't, you know, don't forget about it. Just take a break work on something else, then go back to that. Um, that also helps with just magic in general. Just take a break, work on it, some, work on something else, and then come back to that. And uh, you'll be surprised of how uh, much more you can do. So um, those are just some of my tips uh, for creativity. I know there's a lot of good sources out there for creativity and a lot of uh, really creative people that you could probably get in contact with. Um, so with that, I guess, uh, thanks for watching and I hope it helped. So, uh, have a great day.